third screen in the exhibition. This is the Metropolitan Zone screen. We purchased this three years ago, and this was sort of the catalyst for the exhibition when I purchased it. Um, it occurred to me that this is a not only a distinctive and in, an interesting, vibrant genre within Korean art, but a type of painting or um, a genre of art that a broader audience might enjoy without necessarily knowing the context and then with the context provided uh, would enhance the enjoyment. So the exhibition brings together four screens from collections in the US. As it turns out, there are fabulous examples in American collections and complements the screens with objects, the kinds of objects, decorative art objects that are depicted in the paintings uh, drawn from our own Asian art collection. Detail from our screen. As you can see, the bookcase has been disposed of altogether. And the books and objects are just stacked on top of one another without real regard for how that would play out in reality. It's very precarious. Some of these objects would probably topple over if we tried this in our homes. Um, this compositional format of no books and stacking everything together eventually develops uh, into so-called what's now classified as folk art. That is, even though Chekhori painting started as a, a court art, began as court tradition, it eventually trickles down to all classes. And by the early 20th century, almost everybody owns one of these, if not, if not the entire screen, scrolls of paintings. The later um, versions are much more simplified so that you don't have this uh, full um, set of objects. Um, often there'll be one stack of books and two or three objects, and they get very creative in the kinds of things that they include as well. In the Met screen, some of the more interesting, unusual things that are depicted, painting within a painting, a scroll of landscape painting, in fact, reflects quite faithfully the landscape style that was in vogue at the time. All kinds of porcelain vases, including blue and whites, black glaze with gold painting, but then black glaze gold painting combined with blue and white. I don't think there's anything like this in real life. I don't think, it certainly was not produced in Korea. I don't believe this composite was produced in China or anywhere else, um, so the artist got creative. And as the porcelains represent, many, if not most of the objects depicted in these screens are not Korean objects. Not only are they not made in Korea, they're quite antithetical to the aesthetic at the time in the 18th and 19th centuries, the aesthetic of the elite, the Korean elites, uh, which is much more sort of reserved, um, refined elegance, not the Rococo exuberant, uh, polychromed, colorful aesthetic that you find, for example, in Qing Dynasty China, contemporaneous China. And in fact, many of the objects are Chinese, ob Chinese imports and exactly the kind of aesthetic and style that was different from the Koreans, but the kind of aesthetic and style that in fact was trendy internationally at the time. A Western, a European clock, and I'll return to that in a moment. The fourth screen on loan from the Philadelphia Museum is what I call the floating style. So not only is the bookcase gone, the objects have are arranged without any relation to each other. They're just kind of floating in space. And so without the background, this screen is very, appears very flat. And yet at the same time, if you look at the individual objects, the artist actually did take care to um, put in some shading and to try to depict each object as a three-dimensional item. Um, again, you know, some standard objects such as porcelain vases, um, bronze type vessel, the brush holder with brush papers, and the combination of peacock feather and coral branch, and a European watch. The floating style, in the, pa the painted screens of floating style, probably derives from textile examples, and there are embroidered screens of this genre in Korea. Not that many, but there are some in extent. And in China, there are, for example, rugs that depict these um, antiques or treasures um, in, in floating style. This is a embroidered screen of the Chekhori genre 
that is in fact in the Smithsonian's collection, uh, the Natural History Museum of all places. It was produced for the court in the late 19th century, was gifted to an American admiral who brought it back to the States, loaned it to the Smithsonian at first, and then eventually gave it to the Smithsonian. So it has a great provenance, and it's a beautiful piece. And I hope you can see the, I tried to magnify the, the detail of the embroidery. Returning to the objects that are depicted in the paintings, this is a detail from the first screen that I showed you. Many in that particular screen are depicted several examples of this tall porcelain vase tied with a fabric into a ribbon. And this is a pair of jars, very similar, imitating this porcelain vase, not porcelain, painted enameled copper, so it's metalwork, from the Asian Arts own collection. Bronze vessels, or vessels imitating bronze forms, either ancient bronzes or contempor contemporary, that is, 18th or 19th century bronzes imitating ancient shapes. Um, this is from our collection, and this three-legged so-called dingware is very popular. It appears in this form and in um, various sort of um, mutated forms as well, not only in this particular screens, but in many of these Chekhoti screens as well. Um, incense burning set uh, is considered um, appropriate sort of accessory in a scholar's studio, um, burner, incense container, and a vase with incense burning utensils. And we have an example in our collection. Again, this is a Chinese example, so on view alongside the screen.